like and subscribe now has anyone wrongfully assumed you were dumb and in the process made themselves look really dumb what's your story as a lifeguard we had a rule that very young kids needed an adult in the water within arm's reach in the main pool i saw this mom and her five-year-old walking mom is wearing jeans and on her phone clearly not planning on swimming I anticipate the issue, and go to talk to her before the kid gets in. I explain our policy, that the pool is 4 feet deep minimum, and that the policy is for the safety of the child. That having a parent close by who can respond in case of drowning immediately is by far faster than relying on the lifeguard to get down, jump in and swim all the way out for a rescue. She says it's a stupid policy, that her kid is a fantastic natural swimmer, that they take him to the lake, and he swims just fine. That I'm just harassing her. That I just don't want to do my job. All the classic offended parent BS. Literally while she's telling me this, the kid runs and jumps into the pool. Dog paddles about 10 feet away from the edge. And then goes into active drowning. Requiring a rescue from my other lifeguard. Who thankfully was basically already there to catch the kid. She signed the refusal of care and left quicker than anyone I had ever seen felt bad for the kid. She seemed almost mad at him for making her look like a idiot. I just started to work on the production line of an auto parts manufacturer. I was hot pressing rivets into the base plate of an emergency brake base. According to production logs, a day's run was 300 pieces. Acceptable errors were 3. I worked there for 2 weeks before the line supervisor advised my managing consultant that I was not meeting production requirements. According to my logs, I had zero errors, and exceeded my 300 quota every day. Another line supervisor confided in me, that I was being replaced with my supervisor's cousin. Just arrived from the Philippines. I did not argue or protest, it would have done me no good. The managing consultant knew as well, but had no pull. After re-examining my resume, and seeing I had a degree in computer science and certification in technical manual writing, I was brought back to the very same production floor in a different role. As part of CAC compliance, every workstation needed the production 1 OS documented with illustrated inspection reference guides. When I arrived at the office, my former line supervisor demonstrated the quadruple take. Patrick Stewart had nothing on her. No one told her what my role was. My presence there resembled that of a site inspector. I walked the entire floor borrowing templates taking measurements and photos, looked very official. My former line supervisor thought I was put on her production line as a ringer to inspect her. She worked every day worried I was preparing to give her the axe. She shared that concerning confidence with others who knew better. No one corrected her, just told her not to worry. I had a boss who thought everyone was an idiot. One morning, the computer in the office wasn't working. She asks me if I know anything about computers. I tell her that I've used one before. She tells me to check the computer in the office and see if I can figure out why it stopped working. I press the power button and she calls me a moron, telling me that she had already tried that herself. I get under the desk for a moment then come back up. I tell her to press the power button again. It comes right on. She asks me what was wrong with it. I tell her it was unplugged. I was a service desk technician at a hospital helping a doctor reset his password. He kept misspelling the temporary password. It was welcome 12345. Turns out he thought welcome has two L's, and freaked out at me citing his education and my, at the time, lack thereof as evidence that he was right. After going back and forth he got frustrated and handed me off to his nurse and left. She got it on the first try then apologized to me for her boss's behavior. Funniest part was as she was hanging up I heard her talking to another nurse saying yeah drive. Dumbus couldn't spell welcome again. Doctors are walking textbooks and smart as F. I saw one try and push a pull door three times before I badged him the lock door. You can only have so many skills. Some take up the space of others apparently. I film and edit promotional videos, then post them on my company's YouTube channel. The day after I uploaded a particular run of the mill video. My manager calls me into his office, because one of our Doucher bag directors, who hates our department and loves undermining me in particular, sent an email to my manager and a few higher ups. In the email he stated, 
that I had messed up the promo video because there were all of these other disgusting videos attached to it. As proof, he included a screenshot of the end of the video where all of the recommended videos appeared to star scantily clad Asian women in suggestive poses. Neither he nor my manager knew how YouTube algorithms worked, and that the videos were suggested because he, or someone on his account, viewed that kind of content before. I have no idea how my manager explained this to him. I miss when the algorithm was based off the current video, rather than other videos you've seen. Yes. That was the glory days of YouTube. you could go down such amazing rabbit holes, it was its own whole experience. I love this one. There's something about the justice served stories where people self incriminate that really sends me. Has something similar happened at my last job with customers. We had one or two customers claim that we had porn links on our website and no one could find evidence of this. When we checked, I'm 99% sure it had something to do with whatever the person had been looking at before online and assumed it was us. I'm not sure how the conversation went after that, but I wish I had been there, lol. I think it's probably an extension on the browser from installing all sorts of third party apps. We use a local website to log in for my work. I had a cow walker beside me, and I noticed her login page had ads that were installed by an extension. This reminds me, a female, of the time I was sharing my screen to my team. About 50 odd, at the end of a meeting, where we would do 5 minute desk stretch using a YouTube video. Yes, we were that desperate for content during lockdown. I press play, and the first of that played, was for a pharmaceutical cream for vaginal dryness or something similar. And equally as embarrassing, the whole ad had to play too. No skip button. It was hilarious, but the worst thing was my team would know how algorithms work, but I wasn't even signed in on my account, just opened up YouTube cold, the damage was done, they might have turned off ad personalization, so dry fanny might have been one of the normal ads. Our school's schedule got revamped which meant that one of our classes that was two periods long was cut in half to accommodate for all the changes. When I brought this up to the teacher I was co-teaching with, she called me an idiot and told everyone sitting in our table group that I wasn't very good at math as everyone laughed. A few minutes later, the principal cleared up the new schedule only for her to realize that she was wrong in the first place. Felt so good to see the look on her face when she realized she was the dumbass and not me. What kind of teacher calls someone an idiot and continues to make fun of that person? What a horrible person. Glad she had a reality check. She called her an idiot. Super professional. Shockingly, not everyone is cut out to be in their profession. I've personally had to deal with a newly hired teacher like this. Guess who got fired in their probation period? A tour group had a dad in it who insisted on trying to give his two cents on my animals, and proceeded to put his fingers in the tank, despite my warning and practically yelling at him not to, with our stunted gator saying how hatlings couldn't hurt a human only for the male to shoot out of his favorite hide and latch onto his hand. Yay I had to bite my tongue to stop laughing. Guy tried to tell me he knew my job more than I did, because he went to school to be an engineer and I just sell the machines. Emma I'll him info directly from the manufacturer on why he was wrong. He's not my client anymore. Don't care. F him and anyone who uses education as a reason to be a dick. I've dealt with that before. I used to sell flags and flagpoles, which is a very niche industry and even working in sales you learn some of the special math and rules that involve what it takes to mount a flagpole in the ground, what size flag it can hold, and the many things that go wrong. When people are stupid, I've had to tell many engineers that what they propose will not only fail to work, but cause massive property damage. Trust the people that install hundreds of flag poles a year and sell thousands of flags a month. Had a friend in college who was very full of himself. One morning while eating breakfast in the cafeteria someone said, I wonder how bagels are made. I said, I'm pretty sure bagels are boiled. The pompous friend then said, what are you stupid? Bagels aren't boiled. That's f asterisk ing ridiculous. Someone did a quick google search to find that bagels are, in fact, boiled. People seemed genuinely intrigued by this information. Wait, I thought they were baked. They are boiled for a minute or so, and then baked. It's what makes their crust different from regular bread. When I was in 8th grade, 
we'd just learned about the seasons and Earth's rotation and all that. To my surprise, my teacher taught us that the Earth is actually closest to the sun during winter, but it's cold because of the tilt on the axis, not because of proximity to the Sunday. The tilt determines the seasons. And then soon after that I went to math class and my math teacher said something about how it was freezing because we are so far from the Sunday. And of course I piped up to tell him he was wrong according to what Mr. Science teacher had just taught us. My math teacher went off ripping into me so hard in front of the class. It was like that he was known for being funny and making fun of kids all the time. Him and I were going back and forth for a while and I specifically remember him saying oh yeah cause when I'm cold I move away from the fire. Yeah that makes perfect sense and I kept arguing no no it's because of the earth's tilt and so finally he googled it and I was right. He at least gave me credit and admitted he was wrong after that lol. This reminds me of when I was in 8th grade. We had the 17 year cicadas making an appearance where I live. And I was explaining to my science teacher how I had tons of seagulls by my house. Eating the cicadas. She proceeded to tell me over and over that we do not have seagulls in our area. Because we do not live by a body of water. Lake Michigan was 45 minutes away. I said. Well I definitely have seagulls in my yard eating cicadas. A week or so later. She comes back with a newspaper with a big picture of seagulls on it. They were hanging out in the suburbs to eat the cicadas. She admitted she was wrong, but like my entire life, cicadas or not we've had seagulls in parking lots. This lady must not have been from around here. We just had more because of the cicadas. She comes back with a newspaper. She admitted she was wrong. Damn. I like this teacher. She came back with evidence that she was wrong. Who does that? Pretty impressive, emo. A Dutch couple visited my workplace, tourist visitor center, and insisted that the French translation on our map was wrong. The reasoning was that Groenland shouldn't be there, because it was the Dutch word for Greenland, not the French one. I told them that Groenland was also the French translation, to which they chided back. And how would you know? I'm bilingual. I speak French. I informed. Clearly, not very well. They insisted, then proceeded to ask for the Wi-Fi, so they could use Google Translate. Well, I gave them the Wi-Fi, and to Google Translate they went. Sure enough, Groenland. They didn't even apologize. They just said I guess the map is correct then and left. A-holes, clearly a plot for free Wi-Fi. The Dutch will always find a way to get free sh- Didn't necessarily make anyone look dumb, but certainly made some people feel bad. I lived in Germany for a year after high school as part of an exchange program, and there were several times where I had to make phone calls. I had to call doctors, employers, program coordinators, etc. So I got fairly used to the whole telephone garb in German. I could speak pretty fluently on the phone, but since it's not my native language I would of course make small grammatical errors and stuff like that. This led to the unfortunate situation where people would assume I was German when on the phone, because I spoke well enough, but since I kept making mistakes I was also stupid. People were quite rude to me over the phone, assuming that was due to the assumed stupidity. After revealing I was actually a foreigner they always sounded so surprised and complimentary of my German, and were much more helpful and polite afterwards. You must have had the accent down. I can't even get Zwenny beer bit out before the person switches to almost perfect English. Yeah Germans can't stand Germans not speaking German. Haha. <laughs> I've even had to defend my non-existent German whilst working in tourism in northern Norway. I worked as a rock climbing slash kajak slash surfing slash hiking guide. Some German tourist asks something in German. And I inform them in English that I'm sorry, but I don't understand. I don't speak German. At first they look at me confused, and then continue in German. I then tell them again in Norwegian, Swedish, French and English, that I don't understand. This lady then switches to perfect English, and ask me angrily, why I don't speak German. I look at her and say, because, we are in Norway. She basically huffs angrily, and walks out, and I start talking to her husband instead. Took them on some rock climbing the next day. The lady didn't speak to me at all at first. But after we started climbing up on a fairly long ridge climb she opened up. Actually apologized and we had a great tour after that. I used to work at a courtyard Marriott Hotel. Which is a hotel oriented for business people who have to up early and work late. You know. 
real work horses and road warriors, the hotel was a sprawling 5 stories tall with around 200 or so rooms. It was also right next to Lax, so we always got a lot of business people flying in thinking they were hot SHT, because their company flew them out to do business in LA. Whatever, this one day I'm working front desk, and it's kind of late, around midnight maybe, and one of our guests comes in kind of drunk, and asks for me to reset his room key, before he heads to his room because, we always do them wrong, so I'm like yeah sure thing not a problem, have a good night. He comes back down 5 minutes later, visibly agitated and says what the heck man, I thought I told you to remake my keys, can you do your f***ing job right? And in the hospitality industry you're not allowed to talk back, raise your voice, or really stand up for yourself, your one and only goal is to make the guest feel welcomed, so, I apologize, take the blame, and say it won't happen again, and make him an extra key, he snatches them from my hand and storms off to his room. 5 minutes later he comes back down, again, what is wrong with you, are you stupid, are you wasting my time on purpose, I'm heading to my room, and you better come up with working room keys, and he throws his keys at me, my manager sees this all happen, and is like you know what, let me handle this, you deserve a break, I'm fuming of course, I go to the break room and just pace, wondering what gives people the audacity, to act like that, my manager eventually comes back, he enters the break room with a smile and clearly something to report. He says, he was going to the wrong floor. His room was actually one floor up. He said he's sorry, I wish I could have seen his face. This raised a memory. As a very young woman I was staying in a cheap hotel with my underage sister overnight after a concert when a very drunk and belligerent man began pounding on the door demanding to be let in. It was maybe 3 or 4 am and I called 911 when he began screaming threats of violence. If I didn't open the door, the operator could overhear it and promised an officer quickly. Suddenly the man disappears. Pure silence for maybe 20 or 30 minutes. I'm falling back asleep. Suddenly I hear the door handle jiggling and the lock unclicks. It's the hotel concierge unlocking the door and he's got it all to open the weird bar inside door lock thing as I'm screaming bloody murder. He tells me to let my drunk brother sleep it off and suddenly I hear police don't move. There's a commotion. The police tell me to close and lock my door and we won't be bothered again tonight. The concierge assures everyone there was a misunderstanding and I'll be calmed in the morning. The next morning at checkout the front desk claims no knowledge of this and tell me there's no way I'm getting a discount. Again I was young and just accepted that at the time. But older and wiser I now wonder, if they were working together, if it was an honest mistake, and what the hell would have happened, if I hadn't called 911. At work one day writing a menu board for lunch specials, a couple comes in, and start chuckling behind me, the lady gives me the snide look and says what's a sandwich, it's spelled sandwich, honey, haha <laughs> she wrote sand, like in the desert. I just smiled, and didn't even correct her. That cocky stupidity was truly a sight to behold. Unfortunately not much you can do to correct the wrong correctors, because even if you whip out a dictionary they'll declare it to be defective. Oh, I'm sorry, I went by the Merriam-Webster spelling. You must have found a typo in their dictionary. I'll contact them, and let them know. Thanks. What's your name? I want to credit you with a correction. I'll get it done immediately so, when you get home and google that word you should be able to see your contribution. It's clearly sandwich. If I had a cafe slash deli, I think I'd list sandwiches on the menu board. Just for the hell of it, when I was a toddler I woke up from every nap I took just saying sandwich. Napping is hungry work. OMG. We were at a work Christmas party for my ex-husband's job and there was some dumbass there making fun of another guy. He was telling us all how stupid he is because he says sandwich instead of sandwich. Everyone was just completely dumbfounded. This was probably 20 years ago and my ex and I still bring it up. Whenever anyone says sandwich, I had a customer inform me that the beer yungling a very common beer in western PA, where I was at, was spelled wrong in our menu. She got really shit about it, asking me if I felt embarrassed etc. I asked her how she thought it should be spelled, I'm Ling. I'm an application developer in the public sector. I have made many of the computer programs, where I work such as the human resources, incident reporting, and some of the case management systems. 
Several times I have had people try to tell me, wrongly, how to use an application that I made. I especially like it when they tell me I should ask the people of the company up. What company would that be? I tell them that it is very flattering that they think that the software was made by an entire company instead of by me alone in my office. Haha. <laughs> Reminds me of the time we had a PM and his crew come in and brief our group on a migration they were about to do. What he laid out made no sense to anyone and I figured it ask a few questions to maybe help him see the error in his ways. He got all pissed off that anyone would question his wisdom and ask to the hell I thought I was. The look on his face when I said the author of the procedure and code they were using was priceless. F you Greg. F and Greg man I swear. This doubles as a don't you know who I am moment. Does that gratification ever make up for the nonsense you gotta go through? I had a paper returned to me this morning because I didn't write out all the names of the authors in the manuscript. I took a screenshot of their submission guidelines detailing author names must be formatted with the first initial followed by last name and send it back. Got an apology email and unsubmission received notification a few minutes later. Academia. I swear to god. At least they apologize though. It's a lot better than these other stories where people are willing to die on their hill for no reason was asked by my brother and girlfriend which planet is first starting from the Sunday, was then belittled for 20 minutes after answering Mercury, because they were adamant it was Venus. I was just disappointed, because we are in our 20s. Venus is hotter, Mercury is closer, yes, explained that too, but they were prepared to die on that hill. You could absolutely blow their minds by saying that Mercury is closest to the Sun, but also closest to Earth. Then you could actually make their heads explode by explaining that Mercury is the closest planet to every planet in the solar system. Mercury is the closest planet to every planet in the solar system. One of my favorite examples of a fact that seems totally unreal, but is actually true. When I worked as a cashier in a grocery store people would always want to argue about their produce, they would bring up heads of iceberg lettuce, and then argue with me that they were green cabbage, or vice versa. I would always just smile, void the product, and then charge them for what they thought it was. The best was seeing people come back later pissed that their coleslaw didn't work. The best, though, was the sweet potato vs yam argument that I would have with people several times during the week leading up to Thanksgiving. Most of what we sell in the US are sweet potatoes, though some sweet potatoes grown in one state, Louisiana, are the yam variety of the sweet potato, but people often call them yams and will fight you over it, even though true yams are hard to find. Unless your store stocks stuff for Latin American customers, we did, but yams were rarely in stock and always more expensive than sweet potatoes. Anyway, sweet potatoes would go on sale for the holiday and people would buy lots of them. Every time I rang them up, I would get told that they were yams, and that I was dumb for not knowing that, so I would void them and bring them up as yams for 4 times the price. When customers would want the sale price I would kindly remind them that I had tried to give them the sale price, but that they had asked me to ring them up as yams instead. Ick now. I knew that sweet potatoes came in a bunch of different varieties, and had always kinda assumed that yams were a type of sweet potato. Well, after falling down a wicker hole I now know that not only are they different species, they are entirely unrelated, and their respective lineages diverged about 100 to 140 million years ago. So thank you for pushing me to unlearn that particular factoid, and you made me do a quick bit of research. As a kiwi, I thought I'd never had sweet potato, because I've never had a meal where anyone called it that. But, as it turns out, Kumar are sweet potatoes. It's just our different name for them here. So I've had sweet potatoes like a bajillion times. Oh working in retail has those moments constantly. People don't read the signs. Right and one guy didn't get the right chips for the deal. And was getting mad at me. And told me to come. And he'll show me the sign. I had already dealt with people not reading the fine print on that deal. So I told him I'm not going to look at anything. You can go look for yourself and read it then come back with the right product. He came back without an attitude because he knew he was wrong. And from that point on I always had my guard up when I saw him coming and I was ready for a fight each time. I used to work in a supermarket and one day a woman came up to me and said that the aisle 7 sign was installed upside down. 
It was an older supermarket, so the sign was a 1.2 x 1.2 meters MDF panel in yellow with a big number 7 painted on, and just screwed to the end of the pallet racking. I pointed out to her that there's no way it had been rotated during the middle of the day, since I was down there just a few minutes ago, but she wasn't having any of it, so she took me over there to show me, and of course, it was fine. She stumbled forwards a bit then said that someone has already fixed it.